I met my ex-wife at a building reconstruction facility where I worked as a contractor. She worked as an interior designer, and I have been successfully running my own company for the last 18 years. The repair was carried out by the company in which she worked, and she regularly came there to conduct large-scale measurements and monitor the progress of work. Once, when we were discussing a project, she praised the excellent work done by my team and said that she had passed on positive feedback to her colleagues. Impressed by the quality of our work, my ex-wife suggested that her company cooperate with us more often in future projects. I felt a surge of optimism from this prospect. Although I usually take a professional approach to work, it seemed attractive to me, and I decided to take a step forward. Having overcome the professional barrier, I asked her if she was married. There was an awkward silence, and it became clear that she also wanted to maintain a purely professional relationship. Smiling, she replied, No, I'm not married. Delighted with her answer, I continued, Maybe it would be interesting for you to have lunch together. To my surprise, she replied enthusiastically, of course, maybe next week when I come back to assess the progress of the project. The following week, we went on a date to a restaurant. We had a great time talking, laughing, and genuinely enjoying each other's company. But in the midst of our casual conversation, she suddenly said, wow, I would definitely marry you, caught off guard. She quickly closed her mouth to feign surprise. I couldn't believe those words came out of her mouth. Trying to keep my composure, I just smiled and replied, glad to hear it. From that moment until the completion of the project, we had lunch together weekly. This restaurant has become our favorite place. This may seem like the beginning of a wonderful love story where two people meet, sort things out, and eventually get married, living happily ever. After. But reality turned out to be far from this idyllic fairy tale. This woman, my ex-wife, is nothing but pure evil. We tied the knot in 2013 after three years of exclusive relationships and dating, thinking we knew each other well. For a year and a half, I had the opportunity to attend the annual New Year's corporate parties organized by her company. The memories of the first one still haunt me. There was a guy named John who seemed to me overly kind, constantly overstepping the bounds. Although she rejected his advances, his behavior remained unchanged over the years. When I joined her at the second party, I couldn't help but feel annoyed by his inappropriate actions. It annoyed me that he had the audacity to pursue her, drunk, even insisting on dancing together. She pretended not to notice his behavior, explaining it only by his addiction to alcohol. But eventually, I became aware of its true meaning in her life. Dissatisfied with the current situation, we decided not to stay the night after the party. Our way home was full of arguments. I couldn't figure out if there wasn't something more between them, since his calmness next to her seemed too close to me. Despite my questions, she stubbornly denied the fact of a romantic relationship, insisting that he was like that with everyone. Annoyed, I asked her if she really liked his courtship. She replied with a categorical, of course not. In that case, I advised her to report it to the HR department. She dismissed my concerns accusing me of being overly hot-tempered and assuring me that I had nothing to worry about. Time flew by unnoticed, and the next year came the Christmas party. We were engaged by then, and I proposed to her in front of her family during Thanksgiving. When we came to her firm's Christmas party, congratulations were pouring in from all sides, celebrating our engagement. But to my surprise, John seemed to have a strong dislike for me throughout the evening. It was as if he had turned into... An icy, furious version of himself. And I'm not exaggerating this time. He avoided communicating with my wife, concentrating solely on making me feel uncomfortable and out of place. He seemed to be deliberately trying to intimidate me, as if he had some secret plan. John holds the position of assistant project manager or something like that, often solving tasks that his superiors prefer not to solve. I playfully nudged my wife and whispered, I think your hardworking husband is jealous. It became our inside joke when we called John her husband at work. She casually waved me off, claiming that this was not the case. But I couldn't ignore the way he was looking at me anymore. I told her about my concern, emphasizing that I didn't like his look. In response, she told me to distract myself from him and not pay attention to his behavior. We came to the conclusion that John was just being unreasonable and deliberately ignored him for the rest of the evening. In the end, 
in July 2013, we tied the knot. Interestingly, during the wedding celebration, I asked the DJ to play one of my favorite J. Cole songs, namely Power Trip. But ironically, instead of the song I asked for, the DJ turned on another one called Forbidden Fruit. It seems strange to me because I asked to include only one song by J. Cole, but by the will of fate, during our celebration, the DJ turned on the song Forbidden Fruit. It was a composition by J. Cole with the participation of Kendrick Lamar. The very title of the song had an important meaning. Forbidden fruit referred to the fruits found in the biblical Garden of Eden. According to the plot, God explicitly forbade people to eat this fruit, known as the tree of knowledge of good and evil, but Adam and Eve succumbed to temptation and ate it, which eventually led to disastrous consequences. Now, remembering the past, I understand that it was an important sign that went unnoticed at that time. In October of the same year, we received the joyful news that my wife was pregnant. I was overjoyed, and later we found out that she was having twins. It was like winning the lottery. Time passed, and in 2019, we came to her firm's Christmas party. Surprisingly, she expressed a desire to come alone this year, suggesting that I stay at home with the children. She justified her decision by saying that she was depressed and needed to be alone. Although I was unhappy with this decision, I ended up staying at home with our boys that evening. But she didn't come home as promised. Worried and anxious, I called her on the phone many times, but I got her voicemail. It wasn't until the next morning that she finally returned home. Unable to contain my anger, I began to complain to her about what had happened. Deep down, I felt that something was wrong. She explained that she had drunk too much alcohol and fell asleep in another employee's room. Tears welled up in her eyes. I finally got the opportunity to find freedom, and now I'm being accused of a crime. I was seething with anger, and her tears could not soften my reaction. I continued to vent my annoyance on her. You need to grow up and take responsibility. You're already an adult, you have a family, I said. I explained that I didn't mind her going somewhere alone, but it was unacceptable to lie to me and evade my calls in this way. Upset, she rushed into the room, and a few minutes later, I heard the sound of the shower running. At that time, our children were still sound asleep. Intuition told me that this was not the case, and I immediately reached for her phone. The phone was locked, and I demanded that she tell me the access code, but she stubbornly refused, referring to the fact that I was behaving completely unreasonably and scaring her with my antics. I managed to regain my composure, and I settled down on the couch, waiting for her to finish taking a shower. As soon as she came out into the living room, I told her that I was going to get some fresh air for a while. It was important for me not to leave the children unattended. I quickly took the keys and left. I drove towards Booth Evans, and upon arriving there, I sat down at the table to have a snack. While enjoying my meal, I decided to treat myself to a cup of coffee, and suddenly, I realized that I had brought headphones with me. I activated Apple Music, turned on the playlist, and to my surprise, J. Cole's song Forbidden Fruit from the album Born Sinner started playing. At the same moment, I remembered that it was this song that the DJ turned on at my wedding without my request. Intuition told me that this woman was hiding the truth, and I was determined to get to her. I decided to search the internet for how to use the services of a private detective. After a long search, I came across one person and contacted him. I told him about my difficult situation, and to my surprise, he showed confidence that he could help me. I must admit I was skeptical about hiring a private investigator, thinking that all this could be a hoax. Nevertheless, I remembered the name of my wife's colleague, John, but I preferred not to disclose his full name. Curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to look for him on Facebook. Surprisingly, I found his profile easily, especially since I knew his middle initial from the company's website. Since his page was set up for privacy, I sent him a friend request and a message in which I politely asked if we could chat. To my surprise, he accepted my friend request, but he didn't seem to know who I was, despite the fact that at that moment, he had a photo of me and my wife on his profile. I introduced myself and gave my wife's name, to which he replied, it's all settled between me and her man. I'm not interested in your incomprehensible affairs. I wish you a great day. I replied, what does it mean, everything is settled? Hi, what's your phone number? He asked for my number, and I decided to give it to him. 
A few minutes later, my phone rang from an unknown number. It turned out that it was him. As soon as I realized it was him, I asked, Buddy, how are you? What do you mean it's over between you and my wife? He replied, She informed me that you were aware and that you both had an open relationship, each with a different partner. You had another girlfriend, and she had me. But I ended the relationship seven months ago after she contracted chlamydia, which you passed on to her. A worthless person. I answered in perplexity, What? I don't have any chlamydia. He replied, Well, she has, and she gave it to me. She claimed she didn't know about it, and you're the only one who could have infected her. I knew better than to get involved in your strange adventure. I told him that my wife and I had never had an open relationship. He suggested that I discuss it with her since he no longer communicates with her and actively avoids her at work. Then he abruptly interrupted the conversation. Sitting in the car, I began to panic. Beads of sweat appeared on my forehead. By the way, it was freezing outside. I was afraid that I might have contracted a venereal disease during my week-long absence. My team coped with the amount of work. At that time, I had to take the necessary steps, take tests for sexually transmitted diseases, consult with a lawyer, and order DNA tests for my sons. I intended to hush it up, file for divorce, get my affairs in order, and then meet with her. When I got home, I found that she and the boys were nowhere to be found. I assumed they were at her mother's, just like she said. Later that day, a private detective called me, and I gave him some details of the situation. He communicated his intentions and offered his help. He told me what methods he could use to gather evidence for me. First, he would conduct a thorough investigation. Secondly, he would conduct physical surveillance. And finally, he mentioned the honey trap method, which requires some explanation from him. At first, I was skeptical about this approach, but I am grateful to him for not rejecting it completely. He said that he is a former police officer, which gives his experience additional credibility. He told me about his friend who, the next year after his divorce from his unfaithful wife, won a jackpot of $40,000 in the lottery. In 2013, this friend used the winnings to open a business together with his brother. A year later, they successfully sold the company to a startup technology firm. My brother, who specialized in information technology and software development, played a crucial role in this matter. Although he did not explicitly say that his friend became a millionaire as a result of the sale, it seems that they achieved significant success as the buyer company became widely known. Nevertheless, he noted that he no longer needs to work since he has achieved financial independence. Despite leaving the police, he became bored, and he decided to create a private detective service. This activity allows him to travel a lot around the United States, offering help to people from all walks of life, from the wealthy to ordinary people. According to him, he even helped women collect evidence against their unfaithful husbands, as he has a strong contempt for cheaters. Probably, this opinion is based on his personal experience, since his ex-wife herself was like that. In addition, he said that one of their five children together is not biologically his child. Despite this, he stressed that he continues to play the role of a father for this child, and his relationship with all children remains as strong as before. Then he told about his professional activity. This man seemed to have connections with everyone imaginable, lawyers, doctors, FBI employees, yes, anyone. In addition, his brother turned out to be a genius in the field of information technology, which complemented the versatile abilities of their family union. In the course of our conversation, I found out that he even worked with a famous person. This revelation strengthened my confidence that this person is truly trustworthy. As I said, he continued to work while I was looking for a lawyer. By the time I found a lawyer, he had already collected a fairly large amount of information. We will call this man C or Shark. To my horror, C turned out to be the same person with whom my ex-wife had an affair, as well as the father of twins. When a private investigator informed me about regular joint dinners with my ex-wife, it became a painful revelation for me. Ironically, that's how our paths crossed. We used to have lunch together a lot. I still have their photos taken in various hotels. In particular, the detective managed to make an audio recording of their conversations over lunch at Culver's restaurant.
Despite the fact that the background noise was a little too strong, the brother, having experience with audio recordings, was able to highlight the moments when their conversations were recorded more clearly. On the audio recording, he can be heard asking, well, how are my boys? If he had chosen the phrase, how are the guys doing, at that moment when he asked about our children, I could assume that he was genuinely worried. But when he called them my boys, I was seized with a strong fit of anger. I turned to a lawyer to find out the possibility of conducting a DNA test of my children, asking how legal it is and whether I need the consent of the mother. The lawyer explained that although the mother can refuse part of the paternity test, her consent to the test is not required if her DNA is not used for testing purposes. In the case of a DNA test, it should be taken into account that the potential father bears parental responsibility for any child involved in the analysis process. Knowing this, I immediately scheduled a test for the next Friday. At that time, my wife allegedly lived with her mother. I say allegedly because deep down, I understand perfectly well that this is an outright lie. However, I informed her that I needed to be with our children, and we agreed that I would pick them up from her mother on Friday. During our conversation, she spoke directly about her thoughts using the following words, I sincerely hope that you will soon realize the importance of positive changes in your life. Both I and the boys would be sincerely grateful if you could get together and create better conditions for our family. Please get rid of the negativity and treat me with the respect I deserve. In response, I simply replied, yes, dear. She had no idea that I was about to reveal to her a very important revelation. I have already done the necessary tests for myself and our boys, and to my surprise, the process did not take as long as I expected. Despite the late time on Friday, if I had started testing earlier, I might have received the results on the same day. However, it wasn't until Monday morning that I finally got the result. The truth hit me like a ton of bricks. I wasn't their father. The emotions that overwhelmed me made me burst into tears. It is difficult for most people to understand this, but it is possible to truly realize this experience only by going through it yourself. If she had been standing in front of me at that moment, I'm afraid I might have acted rashly, risking losing my life. Therefore, I turned to my lawyer for advice. Having discussed with him all the evidence I had collected, I presented my attorney with a lot of evidence, including audio recordings, photographs, hotel meeting notes, emails, and of course, the irrefutable results of the paternity test. I told the attorney that I wanted to end this situation once and for all. The attorney nodded understandingly. Before our meeting ended, I gave the attorney the contact information for the private investigator I had hired and instructed him to deliver the divorce papers to my ex-wife at her office building. Further events unfolded dramatically and were fully recorded by my honest private investigator, which helped me to get a full picture of what was going on. I asked my private investigator to provide a record of the entire process, and he assured me that it would be done without any problems. It was not an unfamiliar thing for him since he had already performed similar tasks in the past and would do them in the future. Let me recount the sequence of events. When the man got out of the car, my private detective turned on the video. Later, I found out that he had prudently hidden the device in his shirt pocket for this purpose. After parking the car on the street, he got out of it and began to feed the parking meter. When I watched the video later, I couldn't help but wonder why he put too many coins in the counter. Curiosity got the better of me, and I asked him about it. His answer was simple, you never know how long this whole situation will take. Then he headed to my ex-wife's office in the city center, exchanging greetings with various people along the way. Good morning, sir, hello, ma'am, have a nice day, sir. As he was approaching the building, I noticed a man passing by who stopped to look out the window. The video turned out to be just funny. In the end, he successfully entered the building and approached the security console with a sincere face. He declared that he came to my ex-wife from a completely fictional company, HNX Interiors. Security officers conducted an inspection, after which they sent him to the appropriate room. Going up to the floor where their office is located, he informed the administrator that he had come to an appointment with my ex-wife. After almost eight minutes of waiting, another person approached him and asked about the purpose of his visit. He repeated once again that he needed to talk to my ex-wife and mention that he had a package specially for her. The kind man offered to pick up the parcel on her behalf, saying he could just leave it with them, but my private investigator insisted that he should personally deliver the package to her. 
When they entered the office, they saw that my ex-wife was sitting in the meeting room accompanied by five male colleagues. Apparently, they were having fun, laughing, and sipping coffee under the strict guidance of a man. My private detective entered the room with the intention of personally handing the envelope to my ex-wife. Approaching her, he asked if she was Mrs. Stone. After confirming her identity, she answered in the affirmative. Without further ado, my private investigator informed her that she had received a notification and handed her an envelope. After which, he quickly left. The ex-wife, puzzled, asked about the nature of the present. As he was leaving, her loud scream was heard in the background, replete with obscene expressions. Then it turned out that the envelope contained not only photos of her and her lover, but also the results of a paternity test. As soon as my private investigator managed to get back into the elevator, the furious voice of his ex-wife rang out in the air, No, get back out, you nasty guy. She exclaimed, my detective turned to her with all responsibility and calmly said, Ma'am, I'm just doing my professional duties. I wish you a pleasant day. Keeping calm, he patiently waited for the elevator to arrive, and she continued to shower him with a stream of curses. Around the same time, she started sending messages to my phone, demanding my attention. When I decided not to answer, messages began to arrive, each of which demanded, We need to talk. Please tell me this is just a cruel prank. How could you think of subjecting our children to this? During the conversation, which was confidential, my lawyer told me interesting information about my ex-wife's lover. It turns out that he was well known in the law community of our city. My lawyer apparently maintained a warm relationship with him. According to the lawyer, a frank conversation took place between them, during which it turned out that this was not the first case of this lawyer's infidelity, since he had previously cheated on his wife. Although she had found the strength to forgive him before, this time was decisive for her. A few months later, when our divorce process was still ongoing, as a result of DNA testing, it turned out that AP was indeed the biological father of the twins. The lawyer shared this important information with me, which shed light on the whole situation. As a result, his wife initiated divorce proceedings, wanting to get everything that belonged to him, given that throughout the marriage, she was a stay-at-home mother. When I myself was in the process of divorce, my ex-wife constantly persuaded me not to continue the lawsuit. On the advice of my lawyer, I strictly adhered to the principle of no contact. When the lawyer informed me that AP was also going through a divorce, I naively assumed that he and his ex-wife would eventually be together. However, it became clear that AP was concerned about preserving his own marriage, preventing the possibility of a relationship with my ex-wife. Meanwhile, my ex-wife was faced with the fact that she lost her job, and this was not directly related to her connection with John but happened because of an incident when she vented her anger at a client during a phone conversation. Apparently, this outbreak was not an isolated case, since similar situations occurred earlier in the same month. Perhaps the stress caused by the divorce affected her, and she became short-tempered and did her job poorly. Eventually, the decline in her performance led to her being replaced and eventually fired from her job. During our modest court session, she expressed her despair with tears in her eyes, lamenting that now she had nothing left, both because of the dismissal and because of the enormous stress caused by the divorce. Later, I learned about the specific reasons for her dismissal from one of her colleagues. They told me in detail about the reasons for the dismissal, including that John allegedly claimed that she gave him chlamydia. I tried to get to the truth as best I could and therefore turned to my ex-wife's colleague with a frank request, promising her that I would not react negatively. I asked her if she, like the others, knew about my wife's infidelity with John or with anyone else. The colleague replied casually, admitting that such husbands at work or wives at work have become quite common nowadays. Usually, such relationships do not go beyond the office, but sometimes they go beyond the professional framework. Despite the fact that I felt a flash of anger, I managed to thank her for her frankness. At that moment, it became clear to me that I would never get married again, and I will never urge anyone to get married. From my point of view, the possible risks and disadvantages outweigh the advantages, especially for men. Let me introduce myself. My name is John, and my wonderful wife is Grace. We're both 34 years old. Physically, I do not consider myself to be overweight, although it would not hurt to lose a few kilograms. Throughout my life, I have always believed that I have a decent level of attractiveness. 
During my student years, I had the pleasure of meeting several girlfriends and had no problems attracting the attention of the opposite sex. But everything changed when I met my future wife in my first year. From that moment on, we were devoted to each other, and after a significant period of acquaintance, after seven months, we decided to take a step towards each other and get married. In college, my wife Grace was admired by many and never lacked attention from men. Her mere presence instantly lit up any room, radiating infectious energy. Her playful nature aroused only admiration. I thought we were the epitome of the perfect couple because we genuinely enjoyed each other's company. Meanwhile, our only problem is the lack of time that we could spend together since I work as a system analyst for a well-known IT company. My hard work often limits the amount of time we can spend together. She is a registered nurse specializing in orthopedics at a well-known hospital. Usually, my work schedule is nine hours a day, six days a week, although sometimes I have to extend my work time when I have to solve complex or time-critical issues. Due to the busy work schedule, our time together is limited to weekends. On days when Grace works the day shift, we can spend evenings together, but she often gets tired and goes to bed soon after coming home, usually around 10 o'clock. To compensate for the limited intimacy on weekends, we try to communicate on a deeper level. Our conversations often revolve around fantasies, which in our mutual opinion, should remain only imaginary scenarios. She satisfies all my needs and constantly assures me that I am the love of her life. I am categorically against cheating, and she knows my position on this issue perfectly well. I just can't put up with it. Her work schedule consists of four days a week, shifts alternate every four weeks from Monday to Thursday and total 13 hours each day. As a rule, her shifts in the orthopedic department are from seven to eight hours, both during the day and at night. In addition, there is a transitional period of about an hour between shifts, which she has been experiencing since she started working in orthopedics. As a result, she usually arrives home around 9 a.m. or evening. Over the past two years, I have constantly convinced her of the need to find a stable job, but she is deeply passionate about her current profession and does not want to change it. Therefore, we have learned to accept the difficulties associated with her non-standard work schedule. We both carry the burden of student loans and were convinced of the need to pay off these debts before starting the path to parenthood. After we successfully paid off the loans, we made a mutual decision to postpone starting a family until we settled in a house and neighborhood convenient for us. It's been three years since we reached this milestone, and we both agreed that it was time for my wife to get pregnant. But to my surprise, she didn't. Today, Monday, I left work early, assuming that I had the flu. I immediately sent my wife a message in which I informed her about my indisposition and that I was going to return home. In response, she advised me to take the flu medicine, and I asked about its specific type and storage location. She quickly responded by naming Tammy Flu, which she kept in a medicine container in the second drawer of the dressing table in our bathroom. I answered her message with a simple okay and went home. When I got home, I went into the bathroom with the desire to find her medicine. To my surprise, instead of the expected medicine, I found something completely different. At her direction, I rummaged in the drawer but in search of something with the inscription Tammy Flu, I found nothing. Curiosity made me open the top drawer where I came across flu medications and a package of birth control pills and foil. Surprisingly, she has already consumed the one that was scheduled for today. I was completely stunned by this discovery. Just a few years ago, she assured me that she had given up birth control pills for the last three years. We have tried very hard to conceive a child, but to no avail. Recently, my wife shared with me unpleasant news. Our work schedules constantly overlap, which inevitably leads to the coincidence of her menstrual cycle with our time together. Feeling determined, in the spring, we decided to undergo a thorough examination. To our surprise, the doctor confirmed that none of us have serious health problems. When I look at the foil packaging with pills, the thought comes to my mind, perhaps this is an expired package. But upon closer examination, I understand that the sequence of pills fully corresponds to the current month and the pill prescribed for today has already been taken. On Tuesday, when the 18th of the month came, I could not help noticing that 18 pills were taken in total, including today's dose. Given that the shelf life of the drug expires in two years, it became clear that these pills were recently stored. Various thoughts flashed through my head, 
each of which was even more mysterious than the previous one. Did Grace really want to start a family? Is she having a secret affair? Maybe she has undisclosed health problems? The questions turned my head, leaving me perplexed and feeling offended. Time was slipping away, and our bodies weren't getting any younger, and the truth behind her deception remained undisclosed. The longer we delayed the start of our parenting journey, the more difficult it became. How do I broach this delicate subject with grace? In search of solace, I went to bed, taking Tammy flu with me. Before I knew it, Grace gently woke me up, asked me how I was feeling, and if I needed anything. Although I felt better and didn't need help, I was overcome with a feeling of annoyance when I realized that she didn't trust me, and she remained silent. Watching her, I realized that she believed that I had lost my head again. When she was undressing to take a shower, I couldn't help but notice that some areas of her body were reddened. A sudden realization struck me like lightning. She must have had an affair after her shift before returning home previously. When she worked in another department, her shift took place effortlessly for ten minutes. Why is it now stretched for an hour? Curiosity got the better of me. I quietly went into the toilet and, without closing the door, positioned myself to imperceptibly observe her reflection in the full-length mirror. It seemed that she was taking too much time, and this caused me anxious feelings. Maybe it's a recurring event? I wondered because I had never watched her behavior so closely before. She undressed in our shared bedroom, carelessly scattering her clothes on the floor. My hand instinctively reached for her panties, confirming my suspicions. They were wet. I silently put them back under my robe and went to bed, overcome with anger and impotence. Until now, I considered our life together to be flawlessly harmonious. However, doubts began to creep into my soul, destroying the illusion of perfection. All this time, Grace was playing the role of the perfect wife, lying next to me, and yet the thought suddenly came to me, there must be some sides to her character that remain hidden from my understanding. I really wanted to understand this. Grace came back into the bedroom, fresh from the shower, and got into bed next to me. It was an unusual hour for us to lie together, but she made no attempt to comfort or hug me, and I remained lying on my side of the bed. Long before I woke up the next morning, she had disappeared from my field of vision, having decided to take a day off. I turned to the boss, explaining my absence with the flu. Having a huge number of sick days at my disposal, I decided that it was time to take a break and think about my future plans. I knew that one of my close college friends had made a career as a lawyer, and I turned to him for advice. During our conversation, I found out that the principle of no guilt applies in our state, and since we do not have children, the property will be divided equally between us, a direct 50 50 ratio. The most significant asset at stake was our house, in which a considerable amount of capital was accumulated. It was clear that the sale of the house and the division of the proceeds would be an important moment in the divorce process. After discussing my situation with my friend, he generously offered to represent his interests if I decided to go to court. According to him, the case was clearly in my favor. Around 8 o'clock in the evening, I discreetly parked my car next to Grace's car, intending to follow her and remain unnoticed. Using the Find My Phone app on our iPhones, I made sure that her location was still registered in the orthopedic department. But after waiting for about 10 minutes, it became clear that she was leaving. Trying to meet her, I dialed the number of the orthopedic department and asked to talk to Grace, but I was informed that her shift was already over. She's gone, then it dawned on me that she had deceived me about the duration of the shift, as it turned out that it was only 10 minutes or even less. While monitoring the app on my phone, I noticed that the blue dot indicating her location stopped at an unfamiliar place on the hospital grounds but still within its borders. Determined, I got out of the car and decided to find her phone. But finding the phone turned out to be harder than expected. I came across a place, but unfortunately, it turned out to be on the wrong floor. After a long search that lasted about 20 minutes, I found myself in a room designed for doctors to rest during their long shifts. As I approached, sounds of intimacy were heard from inside. Realizing that it was important to remain unnoticed, I took refuge in the nearest storage room, conveniently left a jar about 50 meters away from me. I waited patiently, waiting for someone to come out of the room. Finally, after about 20 minutes, Grace got out and headed towards the garage. A few minutes later, a man followed her example, closing the door behind him. I resolutely approached him and politely asked the way, 
to which he kindly agreed. He was several centimeters taller than me and had an almost divine appearance, reminiscent of Greek mythology. Looking at his badge, I immediately recognized the name, Dr. William. There was a buzz in my head, and I realized that I needed to work out some kind of strategy. Having dialed the number of my boss, I contacted him and explained to him my unfortunate circumstance. I got the flu, at the same time I stressed that I have personal family problems that require an immediate solution and asked to give me some time to solve them. Having experienced the shock of a difficult divorce a year ago, he was sympathetic to the seriousness of my situation. Realizing the urgency of the situation, he said he would give me as much time as I needed and asked me to keep him informed of events so that he could provide the necessary insurance. After this conversation, I contacted my friend Max, who was a lawyer by profession, and shared with him my desire to bring grace to legal responsibility. Sympathizing and wanting to help, Max offered his services and asked if there was anything else he could help me with. Not knowing my further actions, he offered me to share our funds as a sign of support, taking urgent action. I immediately canceled my credit cards, severing all financial ties. In the midst of this chaotic situation, I wondered what my next actions would be after leaving Grace. Do I have any specific plans? Is there a place where I could find shelter? Realizing my lack of foresight, I shared my concerns with Max realizing the urgency of the situation. He advised me to come to his office first thing the next morning. Based on his experience in such situations, Max has prepared a list of necessary things for me. Remarkably, he even had a list of hotels with reasonable prices for a week in which I could temporarily stay. Realizing that I was facing several important tasks, I prepared for their solution. Having started preparing, I immediately contacted the transport company to arrange for the delivery of a small cargo the next morning. I was going to temporarily store my things in it until I found a more permanent place of residence. Having solved this problem, I went to the bank, where I made a strategic move. After withdrawing half of the funds from all our joint accounts, I took the necessary actions to cancel our shared credit cards, striving for financial independence. I restored accounts only in my own name and requested new credit cards. When the clock struck midnight, which meant the completion of an important stage, I took decisive action to disconnect her mobile phone. Having received the necessary legal documents in the late afternoon, I found myself in my office, where I diligently saved files that I assumed would be needed in the coming weeks. To my surprise, Grace returned home at 9 p.m. We greeted cordially, after which she took a shower and went to bed. Feeling the weight of the day ahead, I also went to bed early, deciding to get a good night's sleep. Not knowing what to do, she didn't notice my presence when I got into bed. Without noticing it myself, I did not pay attention to the chilling distance that had been established between us. The next morning, she left the house before the movers arrived at exactly 9 o'clock. Armed with a carefully compiled list, I marked everything that needed to be packed with transparent stickers. My car was loaded with suitcases and necessary computer equipment, ready to go to work as soon as the movers did their job. As a symbol of the coming profound changes and upheavals, I decided to buy a lonely black rose. This gloomy flower, associated with death and departure, was of great importance as it symbolized the approaching death of our marriage. Moreover, the black rose meant the rejection of old habits and the destruction of the established order, opening the way to a new chapter in my life. I put it in the very center of the kitchen table and wrote a short message. Grace, if you remember, I called you on Monday, informed you about my illness, and my decision to return home. You kindly advised me to take cold medicine and told me where it was. But to my surprise, it was not on the second dressing table but in the top drawer next to the birth control pills. At that moment, different pieces of an important puzzle fell into place. Everything became clear. Your intentions were not to conceive a child because you had an extramarital affair with a doctor from work. It seems that your relationship with Dr. William was more important to you than our marriage, and apparently, this affair has been going on since your transfer to orthopedics. Because of the great abundance of lies, I don't understand how this could happen. I believe that we had a strong and reliable relationship in our marriage. I sincerely believed that you loved me, and now my heart is broken. It is clear that as soon as I found out about this story, our marriage was doomed to collapse. The most interesting thing is that since we live in a state of no guilt, I don't need proof of your infidelity. Obtaining evidence, by the way, was not difficult. 
I split our bills and took all the things I wanted out of the house. Have you noticed that your mobile phone and credit cards may no longer work? Also, please make arrangements to move as I intend to put the house up for sale within 60 days, and all the remaining items will be donated to charity. Now you are free to act on your own. I suspect he's married and has a family, right? You must understand that his wife will inevitably find out the truth. What will the hospital management say about this situation? Do you remember how I made it clear that I would not tolerate infidelity? I'm just warning you about the possible consequences that may arise in the future. From now on, I no longer consider myself your husband. John. Here's my wedding ring. It doesn't matter to me anymore, and I left the ring and the note on the table before I left the house. I checked into a hotel where I could rent a room for a week and patiently waited for further developments. Grace's legal documents were handed over by a deputy sheriff who coincidentally works for Frank in his spare time. Delivery of legal documents is his specialty. In a moment of anger, she apparently lost consciousness. The doctor hurried to her aid and even left the ward in his underpants. Nevertheless, an hour later, she called me in a rage, demanding to explain why I filed for divorce. I couldn't help but doubt the absurdity of her question. Then I told her that she had been unfaithful to me for more than two years. When she asked me when I found out about her infidelity, I replied that it had happened the previous Monday when I came across her birth control pills while searching for a cure for the flu. I heard her sigh on the phone. After this exposure, it became clear how everything falls into place. I abruptly ended the conversation, and it became clear that she had not yet read my letter. I couldn't sleep that night but decided to meet the next day at work. I was greeted by a huge stack of unfulfilled tasks that had accumulated during my absence. I felt trapped, from which there was no way out, no escape. Having no one to return home to, I found solace in the fact that I plunged into work with my head, devoting 16 hours a day, 7 days a week, to professional duties. Max, my reliable assistant, and I often talked, and one day I plucked up the courage and asked about the doctor's marital status. If he was married, I asked if there was an opportunity to inform his wife about his affair. Max readily agreed to consider this idea. Meanwhile, Grace continued to fight against the divorce. Although I haven't seen her or heard from her directly, her lawyer has been in contact with Max. The day of the hearing was approaching, and I found myself in the same room with Grace again. Although she avoided eye contact, Grace and I ended up in the same room. I was wearing a suit with a black rose pinned to my lapel. The judge considering the case did not look very friendly and showed a clear aversion to the divorce process. Grace expressed a wish that we had a consultation, but Max sarcastically asked why she needed it if she was having an affair. I directly told the judge that I categorically refused to attend any consultations appointed by the court. I didn't care about the possible consequences, even if it meant imprisonment. In my eyes, my wife was nothing more than a dishonest, unfaithful, and deceitful person. I didn't have the slightest desire to be in the same room with her, even for a moment. I made it clear to him that from my point of view, I had done nothing wrong, and it was Grace who broke our marriage vows, which eventually led to our divorce. I firmly believed that she was the one who needed counseling, and I sent her there. But very soon, I found out that I was accused of contempt of court and threatened with a fine. To be honest, at that moment, I didn't care about the consequences. I was overcome with anger, and Max had to intervene and take me out of the courtroom before I said something that could put me in jail. He reminded me that this was just a hearing and tried to calm me down. I asked Max to help me determine if Grace was deliberately avoiding doctor visits. I had a strong desire to expose her actions and cause significant harm. Max took the trouble to hire a detective who discreetly installed a video camera in the doctor's restroom, which recorded footage of Grace and the doctor's indecent behavior during off hours. In addition, the audio recording recorded how Grace speaks unfavorably about me. It was like an adult movie. At that moment, I asked Max if it was possible to hold the hospital accountable because we had specific video evidence. Although he believed that we would not be able to use the video as evidence in court, he admitted that if leaked from an anonymous source, it could tarnish the reputation of the hospital and cause an unfavorable public reaction. He advised me to be patient and wait for the end of the divorce process before sending the video to the hospital administration, the doctor's wife, as well as our friends and relatives. 
His advice seemed reasonable to me since I certainly didn't want Grace to be fired before our divorce was finalized since in that case, I would have to pay alimony. Naturally, I wanted to avoid such a scenario. In the end, the long-awaited day of divorce came, and to my surprise, the judge made an unequivocal decision, deciding to divorce without additional consultations. The judge considered that our marriage was irreparably destroyed due to excessive hostility between us. Therefore, the divorce was formalized. The next day, a video recording made by an anonymous source, completely unrelated to me, suddenly surfaced. Chaos ensued. Grace rushed to me, demanding an explanation about my actions. I calmly replied that there was no evidence of my involvement in the leak of the video. But nevertheless, I found it necessary to thank the anonymous person who leaked the video. I also took the opportunity to remind Grace that I will not tolerate betrayal, especially when she acts so openly, continuing the betrayal even after I started the divorce process. Her actions led to the dissolution of two marriages. I admitted that the situation could have been worse, to which she reluctantly agreed. The next day turned out to be even more stormy as our relatives and friends reacted to the video. Surprisingly, everyone rallied around me, giving unwavering support and expressing their disappointment and contempt for grace. This contrasted sharply with the idea of our supposedly ideal marriage, which everyone around us adhered to. It's been three years since I last saw or heard from Grace. It looks like she was elusive and was struggling with severe burnout. Meanwhile, I got married for the second time to a really wonderful woman, and now we have a one-year-old daughter. My new wife wants to have a big family and is going to be a mom without leaving home, which completely coincides with my desires. As for Grace and William, their path was associated with certain difficulties. Grace made numerous attempts to contact me for almost a year, although I still do not know her motives or the reasons for these attempts. Naturally, I didn't give Grace a chance to reconcile. As a result, both William and Grace unexpectedly quit their jobs. In addition, William's wife began divorce proceedings. Grace could have handled these setbacks, but I made the situation even worse by distributing the video to our friends and relatives. This was the last blow for her, which made her think about starting her life anew. If she hadn't challenged the divorce, she might have been able to keep her job. Although Grace really wanted to save our marriage, she turned to a psychologist for help, but my anger was getting stronger. Grace lost the case in court. Her second mistake was the decision to continue dating William and enter into an intimate relationship with him. I made an informed decision to wait for the official registration of our divorce before distributing the video. This step allowed me to avoid the obligation to pay alimony if she had been fired from her job before the divorce. Eventually, after overcoming shame and humiliation, Grace moved to Oklahoma City and got a job as a nurse in a doctor's office. Grace may be making an effort to rebuild her life, and I sincerely hope she has gained wisdom from this experience. This event happened just over two months ago. I am currently 48 years old, and my loving wife is 45. We have two sons, 21 and 23 years old, and a wonderful 19-year-old daughter. Throughout our family journey, my youngest daughter has always been in a special connection with me. She was often called Daddy's Daughter. I like showering her with love fulfilling her wishes, and showering her with affection. But when she reached the female age, there were noticeable changes in her, and she began to feel more at ease participating in conversations on women's topics. This strengthened the bond between my daughter and her mother, but despite this shift, my relationship with my daughter remains positive. When she got closer to her mother, my role in her life changed and turned into the role of a father responsible for discipline, not only for her but also for her older brothers. While her mom became her best friend, I took on the responsibility of being a parent. Together, they provided each other with unwavering support in all endeavors. My wife especially appreciated the ability to use the present moment. Conversations with my daughter about boys who find her attractive and about her possible interests were commonplace. The usual conversations of teenage girls, as I thought. Facebook, Instagram, and shared posts with pleasure and willingly read comments of others. In addition, they both actively communicated on social networks such as Instagram and Facebook. It was amazing that our daughter even at a young age gathered a significant number of followers on Instagram. I was told that this is a common occurrence for attractive women on such platforms. 
I must admit that I've always been a bit old-fashioned when it came to social media. Unlike the popular Instagram platform, while others were caught up in this hobby, I managed to stay away. But my point of view changed when my daughter turned 17, and I found out that she has been in a relationship since the age of 15. Surprisingly, her mother was aware all the time, and they openly discussed the joys and problems of teenage relationships. My wife playfully calls me a dinosaur because I did not even suspect that this is the norm for modern teenagers. Over time, I came to the conclusion that this has become a common occurrence in the life of a modern teenager. The main thing that bothered me was that it would not cause conflicts in our family, in which my wife, daughter, and I are involved. But what I found hard to come to terms with was the fact that at such a young age, she enters into relationships with several boys. It was a boundary that I firmly established, they were well aware of my traditional views on dating. From my point of view, the usual life trajectory of a young woman involves dating in college to find a companion for life. We came to the point where we had to face our different views on relationships. As a child, I was taught that getting married after college and starting a family is the natural course of life. It was thanks to this approach that I eventually met my wife, but she held the opposite opinion. According to her, it has become common for young women to meet with several men at the same time to choose the most suitable partner. It was difficult for me to agree with this point of view, and I often accused her of encouraging such behavior. Unfortunately, my wife consistently supported our daughter's point of view on dating, as a result of which I felt somewhat powerless. In the end, we found ourselves at a crossroads, forced to consider and try on our conflicting points of view. When our daughter turned 18, she went on a romantic trip with a young man who was two years older than her and had already entered student life. To my relief, he got the same profession as me, and after getting to know him, I couldn't help but feel his wonderful character. It was then that I began to reconsider my views. Perhaps I held on too tightly to my traditional values, ignoring the potential advantages of a modern approach to dating. My wife and daughter, in this regard, I decided to step back for a while to assess the situation from a different point of view. Over time, we decided to let things take their course. We invited my daughter's boyfriend to participate in our family activities, such as fishing and nature trips. Surprisingly, he easily fit into our family, becoming an important part of our life. Moreover, my sons fell in love with him and began to appreciate his presence. It is important to note that he behaved very respectfully, and his sincere intentions towards my daughter were obvious. This young man gave me hope, especially given the prevailing opinion that traditional relationships no longer exist, but here he challenged these ideas himself. It was noticeable that casual acquaintances, parties, and drinking did not attract this person. Although their love for each other was mutual, it seemed that he could feel even deeper affection for my daughter than she did for him. It didn't bother me at all because I understood that many relationships, including mine and my wife's, had similar dynamics at an early age. I was very pleased to see a young man who genuinely cared about my daughter and sought to maintain a loving relationship with her, especially at the time when she was starting her way to college. Recently, my wife informed me that our daughter has decided to move in with her boyfriend outside of a university campus. She considers it a financially profitable solution and is sure that living with someone she knows will make life easier. Although I understand her arguments and respect her opinion, I personally take a different position on this issue. I am convinced that it is extremely important for our daughter to gain experience of independence and responsibility while living on a university campus. In addition, I have doubts about the cohabitation of a young woman with a man with whom she is not engaged and not married, and therefore I cannot fully support this idea. I made sure that my daughter chose a dorm rather than living with her boyfriend off campus. Surprisingly, less than a year later, my daughter's boyfriend approached me with the intention of proposing to her. Although I did not immediately give my blessing, he made a sincere impression on me. It was a rare situation when I found out about my daughter's relationship earlier than my wife and daughter. Therefore, I decided to postpone the blessing for now. I wanted to discuss this issue with my wife as her opinion was important to me. In addition, I decided not to talk about it directly with my daughter since her boyfriend wanted to surprise her by telling her about the engagement. After discussing this issue with his wife, she fully approved of him and admired the young man. I also took the opportunity to talk to my daughter about her relationship with him but did not tell her about his intention to propose. Perhaps she had already guessed it herself. 
During our conversation, she openly confessed her love for him. She had always dreamed of a future with him, and it seemed like her dreams were becoming reality. I couldn't help but feel a sense of pride watching everything fall into place. A few days later, I gave my consent to my daughter's boyfriend, and after getting engaged, they decided to live together off campus. Watching their relationship grow stronger every day, I felt genuine happiness. This was not a surprise to me because he was a bright and talented young man who had a bright future ahead of him. From the very beginning, he expressed a desire to be devoted to my daughter. She was, of course, an amazing girl and I couldn't help but notice the admiration she aroused in men as she grew up. One day, I accidentally overheard a telephone conversation between my wife and daughter, which was not unusual, but this time their conversation was about another man. Apparently, she met a new person and began to have feelings for him. Naturally, I was very concerned about this unexpected discovery, but I refrained from making hasty assumptions. Instead, I considered the possibility that I might have misinterpreted or missed part of the conversation. After my daughter finished the conversation, I decided to turn to my wife for clarification. I gently questioned her about possible problems in their relationship, wanting to make sure that everything was in order. To confirm my fears, I continued to sort things out, but my wife claimed that I probably misunderstood her. A few days later, while looking through the mail, I came across an envelope addressed to our house from an unknown sender. This incident prompted me to delve deeper into the essence of the matter, as a result of which I found out that a completely different person had sent something to my daughter. She decided to deliver the letter to our house as she did not want her fiancé to know about her relationship with another person. When I told my wife about the situation, she admitted that our daughter was secretly dating another man. I was surprised by this fact as I sincerely wished her and her fiancé a successful relationship. Trying to find solace, I reassured myself that life often deviates from the desired path. Sometimes, even with the most optimistic mood, circumstances take unexpected turns. It suddenly dawned on me that I can't manipulate my daughter's heart and dictate who she falls in love with. Considering that she had been dating another beau for several months, I thought she had broken off the engagement. Considering the close connection between her previous fiancé and me, as well as his impeccable manners, I decided to contact him and find out about the latest developments. Feeling the need to sort out the situation, despite the termination of the relationship, I contacted him, but to my surprise, he didn't seem to notice any problems, enthusiastically discussing future plans with my daughter. This caused me both bewilderment and relief that I did not accidentally reveal these events. Later, I told my wife about it. I realize that it is important to honestly understand the situation and not to keep it secret and prolong uncertainty. I must admit that at first, I did not know how to deal with this issue, and I was thinking of bypassing it, naively hoping that everything would resolve itself. Considering that I had a lot of personal affairs, I did not want to delve into the secret relationship of my daughter and the role of my wife in them. But a few months later, my daughter's fiancé contacted me, who told me about his concerns about their relationship. He told me that my daughter's behavior had changed towards him, and it became clear to me that I could no longer ignore it. I did not dare to reveal the truth because I believed that it was not part of my duties, but despite this, the conversation made a strong impression on me, especially when he described in detail her night parties and periodic absences from home, not knowing who she was communicating with. And not wanting to share details with my wife, I was increasingly worried about my daughter's well-being. This prompted me to take action and install a GPS tracker on her car to be able to track her location. To my relief, I found out that my daughter continues to attend college regularly. At the same time, she often went to a certain place where another man lived. When I told my wife about this, expressing my concern about our daughter spending time with another man while in a relationship with her fiancé, her main concern was that I was following our daughter, which she regarded as an invasion of her personal space. She called me a domineering person, which I think is unreasonable. First of all, I was worried about the welfare and safety of our daughter. What if something happens to her? What if the other man is dangerous or involved in illegal activities? My wife didn't think about any of the above. All she focused on was the fear of losing our daughter's trust and the feeling that I prefer our daughter's fiancé over her independence. I tried to explain to my wife that my sincere concern is due to the fact that in the case of a negative attitude of our daughter's fiancé to the situation, cruelty may occur. 
I firmly believe that it would be in our daughter's best interests to be honest with him. I had conflicting feelings when it came to my daughter's feelings and the complex nature of her relationship. Although I wanted her to be with her fiancé, I didn't mind her choosing who to date. But what was hard for me to come to terms with was the fact that she left a really good young man. He acted nobly by contacting me and expressing his sincere intentions. The fact that I allowed my daughter to continue this relationship was like a betrayal towards him. When my wife showed passivity in dealing with this situation, I felt that I had to take action. I decided to have a serious talk with my daughter about a delicate issue. She told me about her desire to continue her relationship with her fiancé and at the same time keep in touch with another person in order to preserve honesty and decency in their relationship. I felt it necessary to present her with an ultimatum, she must confess to her fiancé of her betrayal. I firmly decided that a relationship built on deception would not lead to a healthy start, but the daughter expressed her concerns, saying that revealing the truth would cause her fiancé severe emotional pain. I suggested that it would be better for him to learn the truth directly from her and not from someone else. After our conversation, my daughter decided to turn to my wife, trying to convince her not to let me into her romantic affairs. Although I understood her desire to live a private life, I sincerely believed that the situation could become dangerous. I also knew that they would rely on me when the situation inevitably changed for the worse. Because it became clear that my daughter did not intend to be honest with her fiancé, I was faced with a difficult choice, to personally contact him and tell him everything. This conversation was emotionally draining, and it is clear that he was devastated. In the conversation, I stressed the importance of prioritizing his own well-being and warned him against impulsive actions, reminding him of his youth. Unfortunately, he took my words to heart and eventually ended his relationship with my daughter, leaving her with a broken heart. Unfortunately, information about my actions spread, and it was unpleasant to see that people were fixated solely on the fact that I had revealed the secret of my daughter. Despite her mistake, I decided to focus on the positive aspects of our relationship and keep the desire to get through this difficult time together. It is unpleasant for me to observe how society often turns a blind eye to infidelity and dishonesty, allowing such behavior to continue. But I am determined to keep my integrity and speak out against the fact that lies should not be tolerated. My wife is a loving and devoted woman who actively participates in our life together. She shows care and kindness, which makes her an exceptional life partner. Our relations are based on a deep understanding of each other, which is the most important cornerstone. On the other hand, my daughter's ex-fiancé was once a friend of my son's. This sad experience allowed them to learn a valuable lesson, you cannot maintain a relationship tainted by infidelity. I have instilled in my son strong principles. Currently, my wife prefers to express her dissatisfaction with silence. My daughter made the decision to leave college and return home, which caused tension in our relationship. It seems that she wants to prove her point by insisting on seeing me every day. Although I would prefer her to be focused on her studies, when I am around, she often becomes emotional and raises her voice, making it clear that I am aware of her experiences. In addition, my wife constantly throws disapproving glances at me, which indicates that she considers me responsible for all the difficulties we face. Despite this, she continues to cook for me, although we are not on the best terms. Surprisingly, this state of affairs does not particularly bother me. I am sure that my daughter will eventually overcome this difficult situation. Recently, she began to quietly write negative things about me on her social media accounts instead of directly expressing her claims. But I believe that when she stops writing and is ready to talk, I will have the opportunity to teach her some valuable life lessons. It is important to take into account that her breakup with her fiancé occurred only nine weeks ago, so the emotional wounds have not healed yet. I admit that my actions are criticized but I hope that through open communication, we will be able to work on understanding and development. There are people who believe that I do not care about the welfare of my daughter, but I strongly disagree with this. I firmly know that I am the one who cares about her well-being, and I have good reasons for this statement. Firstly, I am completely unaware of the identity of this mysterious man who seems to be hiding in the background. The lack of communication with the parents raises serious concerns about his intentions towards my daughter. Secondly, given my daughter's youth and exceptional beauty, it is likely that she may face difficulties in finding another suitable and worthy partner. It is very important to tell her about the negative consequences of promiscuous behavior, 
to which, as it turned out, my wife encouraged her from an early age. Although I suspect that my wife's behavior may indicate a tendency to promiscuous intimate relationships, I do not believe that she is having an affair. On the contrary, I think she is somewhat immature and perhaps believes that childish behavior helps her to keep young. Therefore, I will do everything so that my daughter begins to understand the concept of a decent life and finds herself a decent man to start a family.